Well, I've held off as long as I could. <laughs> hey! It's Romania Black, and I probably could have held off a few more weeks before watching this final episode of season one, but I don't want to wait, but this is literally as long as I can hold myself off. I'm like, no, I have to, I have to keep watching. <laughs> So we're on the episode 28, the final episode of Free Run Beyond Journey's End, and I'm really glad that we had 28 episodes this season. I know episodes one through four were condensed, but I'm really happy that um, they were 28 episodes because I would honestly watch this season as long as they wanted to keep making it. So I'm pretty confident that there's going to be a season two with this series because we're nowhere near to the point of being at heaven. We've just now, I think that we're going to find out who passed the final exam. We know some of the people that passed. We know Free Run did not. <laughs> we know Fern did. Fern's the only one that's passed so far. Um, and we know that Dunst has not. We know that Air has not. Sharf has not. Laufen has not. Um, I think those are the four main ones that were like, nope. And oh, Kenne. Kenne and Lavine obviously have not. So we've still got to find out what the results were for the rest of them. If we don't find out this episode, I'm going to be frustrated. I'm going to be like, what do you mean, show? Why aren't you telling us? So I'm hoping that we find out did Dinkin pass? Did Verbal pass? Did Methode pass? Like, how is this going to work? And then we have the rest of the episode to kind of figure out, well, what do we do from here? If, if Fern has passed, what does that mean? Does that mean all of them can move forward? What about Free Run? Are, are they going to have to split up? Like, what's going to happen? We don't know where Cyan is. Are they going to go out and find him? Are they going to split up and a, somebody go find Cyan and then others meet, like, and we're going to meet up at a certain location? Like, what are we doing? I, I feel like the manga is not close to being halfway done, but we've got to figure out where to go to from here. So, so I have really loved this series and we're going to talk about it more after the reaction of the episode obviously so i'm going to save all my gushing for then but i've been so excited week to week to watch this show it's been such a refreshing and fantastic and fun show to just really get involved in and the character development has been so much fun as well which is character driven shows i'm all about like you can have amazing animation that's a bonus you can have awesome action that's a bonus but there have to be characters that i not only can relate to or find intriguing, but characters I want to root for and follow. And this series has so many different ones. You can kind of latch on whichever ones that you want to. So, so we'll talk more about that after the episode discussion is over. But with that being said, um, I do want to acknowledge a few comments on here before we dive any further. Um, Oscar Bergin, uh, 1733, talked about how Lavigne's brother... He did not take the actual exam. And I was like, okay, that makes more sense. Like, having gone back and looked at the episode, I agree. I think it seemed more like they were raiding the tomb than actually taking the exam. After the exam was over, that kind of made more sense. Now, they commented that Sinza, you know, that Sinza had just picked this place on a whim and didn't have any prior knowledge to it. But I'm like, well, she knew about the Spiegel because she knew that was going to happen. I... I kind of disagree a little bit with their comment because I think, because they talked about Sinza like tripping over the trap. I think that was intentional. I think that she was, you know, trying to gauge Freerun and Fern and what they were going to do. I think that was intentional. I, I hold her up to a little bit more high of a standard to that. Um, but also, I also think that Jeannot was surprised that Sinza chose that place for the test because it's something that he would never do. Jeannot would never pick that type of test. And so I think he was like, really, wow, you are a pacifist. This is what you chose. But, you know, I that's just my thoughts and opinions. We don't really have, unless the author confirms it, we don't have any way of knowing for sure. So that's kind of the fun we get to say, like, well, this is what I think, this is what you think. So I appreciate you offering that perspective. Um, I am Mello talks about Edel's voice actress is the same as Mitsumi from Skip and Loafer, which I thought was really, really cute. Cute. I like that a lot. Poor Edel. <laughs> and then Darwin Award winner said that Senza in episode 23 said that she was actually invested in Fern, not Freerun. And I think that that's quite interesting because Senza, you know, Senza seemed to have like a little bit more of intuition than Jeannot or maybe even to some extent, Sari, I'll even argue, because like Jeannot, he was like, oh, the barrier's nigh unbreakable. It's not going to be a thing. And since it was kind of like, well, it seems like somebody's been examining it and it's going to break. So in her mind, it seemed like it could happen. Now, of course, we have the whole thing with her and Ubel. That's a whole different story. We talked about that last week or the week before. But 
I think that it's interesting that she was examining Fern because she was fascinated by her and like what was her story like it seemed like Fern was keeping something close to the vest and that maybe applies to like Senza too maybe Senza kind of saw something that related in herself that she keeps things rather close to the vest and so she thought Fern was kind of a, a like-minded soul I think that's rather interesting I kind of like that I like that Senza didn't over didn't underestimate Fern whereas so many other people in this show have underestimated Fern they fucked around and found out, basically. <laughs> and since it was not one to do so, so I think that's really interesting. But yeah, so I, I'm i so excited to dive into this last episode and see what all we get from it. I think it should be a lot of fun. But I, as far as besides finding out who passed the test and who didn't, I don't know what direction they're going to take us in. There's a lot of options of what we could do now that this exam is over and what we're gonna do about that, I, we'll just have to wait and see. So in any case, I hope you all are excited. I definitely am, but we're not gonna waste any more time. We are gonna dive right in to this final episode and just see what we get. So we're gonna start episode 28 of Free Ren Beyond Journey's End. And we're gonna do that here in three, two, one, and I'll see y'all on the other side. Oh, the show almost made me cry again, again. I was like, I'm not going to sob my way through the ending of this, but I really wanted to. <laughs> this ending, oh my gosh, that was just such a... It was a great way, a good send off. My dog's like, now you have to throw to me, winch. <laughs> now that I've let you watch this episode. I This episode was so good. And it was a great end to the season. And now it's like, where do we go to from here? I just, I want to talk about it with y'all because they kind of set the stage of we're going to possibly see several of these characters again in the future, which is really exciting to me. Um, it's setting up, there's a lot of interesting things to come from said characters. So I'm pretty excited to see what we're going to get about this, but I have some theories. We'll see if season two shows us if any of them are correct, but... I'm very curious to see uh, what we end up getting, but go back to this idea of, I like that all this tension, all of this, who's going to pass, who's not going to pass, and Free Run's just over there yawning like, oh, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> She's great. I love Free Run so much. So I did not realize, I'm glad y'all didn't say anything in the comments, but I didn't realize that the mage with the staff in front of their face is Lernin. And we hadn't seen Lernin with their staff until... We got to this episode when he tried to attack Freerun, and we'll we'll talk about that. But so I'm glad we can see each of them go through. Each of them, we we had six mages pass of of the group, which again, much more than usual. But also, I, I feel like Sinza. I'm glad that Sari kind of apologized to Sinza. I thought that was really nice of her because <laughs> Sari doesn't have to apologize. Sari can, as Freerun say, be kind of a child, which you know what? The elves can be kind of childish, right? I think Kraft is maybe the only, ex well, no, Kraft was doing those weird, like, sit like weird sit-ups. <laughs> so those weird squats, he was doing those. So he's kind of childish in a way. He's just probably a lot older than Freerun and Sari. So maybe it's not as noticeable, but I think the elves, are, do have kind of a childish side to them, like Free Ren with the whole like sleeping in and not being a morning person and with the mimic, Kraft with his weird little squats, and then Sari can be kind of childish in that she's just very flippant sometimes. She's like, no, this is how it is. And it's just her way or the highway. So I was very interested to see why she would let certain people pass and why she wouldn't. Ferns, we talked about last episode, but now we have the others. And so we have our, our six mages that passed and are now first class. Ta-da. And then we have all of our ones that did not pass. And we'll talk about them all on here. But so Dinkin, at first, I feel like if Lernan had been in the room, he might have been a little bit offended. Because she's like, you're a self-made military mage who rose to be the most influential. She's like, your ambition and drive is, you know, something that she, you know, aspires to have in her clutches. But she's like, you're old. She's like, I wish I could have met you when you were still young. And I love that we flash back to seeing him when he is still young. Uh, we'll talk about the whole thing with his wife. I'm like, oh my gosh. But the idea that he's just been a man of business. He doesn't have any kids. He doesn't have any grandkids. He's been a military man who's just, it's been like all business, all my career, 
my whole life. He's like, I haven't stopped down and settled down because I'm trying to get to this one point. That's my ambition before I die. And I feel like he wants to go see his wife in the Northern Lands, but he can't until... It's almost like Ciri's entire corporation. Now, can we say for sure whether the Continental Magic Association is the reason why he can't go to the North to presumably see his wife's tombstone? I don't think that that's entirely all of it, but the conflict... I feel like with Dinkin and his mindset, the conflict is... I need to go north. I want to go see my wife's grave. I want to go do something and use magic and be important again. But because of this Continental Magic Association, I can't go till I pass a stupid exam that you all have put a, a limit on of how many people can go. And he's like, this is just holding me up. So, so yeah, I, I definitely feel as if it's kind of Sari's fault that this has happened. But there's a lot more to it than that. And she says, I'm no, I have no interest in you. She's like, I would have had no interest in you if you were burnt out. But recently, she's like, you know, I've kind of been shown some people that defied my expectations. And she and Dinkin's like, well, do you feel differently? And she says, when you saw me, you thought about how you'd fight me, didn't you? Sari's like, if you got some fight in you, if you got some fire in your belly and you ain't given up yet and you're willing to take me on, she's like, I respect that. She's like, that's what you need to have. So cool. And she's like, you were thinking about fighting me. And he's like, well, he's like, I was going to, but I abandoned the idea. And she's like, no, you pass. You still got some fire in you. You can still do some good. You might amaze me still. Fine. And she's like, normally it wouldn't have occurred for anybody to fight me. So next. I love that Ubel was instant. Didn't, they didn't even say two words. She looked at Ubel and went, yep, you're good. <laughs> Just. She's like, nope, you pass. You are exactly what I need. Let's do it. And Ubel's like, we're not going to talk. And she's like, do we need to? She's like, have we, we haven't even spoken. And she's like, do we need to talk? And Ubel's like, no, nope, we're good. <laughs> Freaking love Ubel. I love Ubel so much. I absolutely, we're going to talk more about her and land. But I was just like, that was the best. Just instant. Nope, we're good. So then land shows up and she's like, this is this a joke? Like, what do you mean? She's like, this is the exam. What kind of idiot wouldn't set foot in the examination ground? And then land's like, well, I'm here. And she's like, yeah, no, you've been in your hometown the whole time. You've never been here. That was like the best surprise in the whole damn episode. Like the fact that Land hasn't been there at all. They've all been copies. She's like, where well, you enjoy some tea at home right now? And so what do we do? She's like, we, we zoom out from the castle. We zoom out from the castle, through the forest, past the woods, over here to this random cottage. And he's like, oh. That is like some Bungo Stray Dogs, like plot twist. I'm, I'm here for it. If you know, you know. But he's like, oh. He's like, not even Ubel noticed. Yet. Yet. <laughs> and she's like, no, you've got guts. She's like, she's like the audacity. She's like the audacity, the gall, the gumption, and the nerve. You pass. <laughs> I was like, oh, I love it. I, Sari's like, if you got the gall and you got the guts, she's like, you need the charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent. She's like, Dinkin had the charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent. Ubel had all of it. You have all of it too. So we'll let you, you had the nerve, you had the nerve to show up at this exam and not even be here. She's like, yes, you pass. Freaking love it. So technically they are the only two of a team that passed together. Everybody else here has had at least one team member not pass the exam. But Ubel and Land, power couple to rival Stark and Fern. I, I tell you, I want them to go on a double date. I need it, I need it. But yeah, she's like, next. So then there's Verbal. Verbal's interesting because she's like, you didn't think you could beat me. And he's like, no. He's like, I couldn't. She's like, of the second class mages, I know you're the most combat oriented, which is right up Sari's alley. She's all about battle. And she's like, with a look, you realized you couldn't beat me in battle in a single glance. But you weren't afraid. You were just being realistic. And he's like, well, an idiot prone to figuring fights he can't win wouldn't even make it as far as this. Which is exactly what Sari would like to hear, right? She's like, that's true. I like that as the testers like go one by one, Sari slowly like slowly tilts herself around away from the fountain and slowly gets closer to them. I, I think that's such a cool little touch. She's like, and, and, and then, you know, Methode and Verbal have the most uh, questions out. Like Ubel has the least. 
Abel, she just looked at it. She was like, nope, you're good. And Lan, she's like, nope, you're good. And then Dinkin, she's like, you know what? I thought about it. Thought about not passing you because he is kind of like Freerun a little bit. She's like, but she's still got fire in you. So yeah, no, we're good. So then she's like, I like that she asks Verbal what his favorite spell is. And for a second, I thought he wasn't going to pass because she asked Freerun the favorite spell and that didn't work. But he asks, he answers exactly like she wants. Magic is a tool for killing I don't like or dislike spells. So she's like, you pass. Yeah, see, Sari makes fun of Freerun so much because Freerun uses spells just, you know, I feel like it's interesting because both Freerun and Sari, they neither like nor dislike spells necessarily, but Freerun finds magic to be fun and something for everyone, and Sari finds magic to be a tool used to protect themselves and in this case to wipe out your opponents and verbal has the exact same thoughts that sari does so he's like i don't like magic i don't dislike it i just need it to help me accomplish my goal and she's like you and i were on the same level so verbal ends up passing then there's methode methode's the last one and methode arguably the most attractive of all of the first class mages that have passed. Um, I like that Sari looks at Methode, who kind of has a flom. Like, like, she looks so funny there where she's just sitting there kind of spacing out. I'm going to take a screenshot of that. Like, spacing out in the distance. I feel like Methode looks a little bit like flom, so maybe there's something there. But she just looks so spacey, and she's turned herself around. And then she just looks over to Methode, and she's like, what did you think when you saw me? And this answer, Methode's like, oh, I, um, I thought you were small and cute. <laughs> she, like, kind of, like, hits on Sari, and Sari's like, oh, well, she's like, what's wrong with all these test takers? <laughs> she's like, oh, and then she just says, you pass. Like, Methode, Methode's like, I thought you looked really cute and attractive, and Sari's like, okay. I was like, is... Like, Methode didn't have to do anything. She just, I guess because Methode wasn't afraid of Sari. I guess because Methode was just like, are we, is this it? I, okay, what? Methode had the easiest test of all. Like, all she had to do was, was compliment Sari. And she's like, okay, you passed. We're good. I guess because Methode just wasn't afraid. And that's the end. So then she's like, well, since uh, my apologies, we do have a bumper crop this year. So I love that as Verbal, Verbal looks like he's taunting Air and Sharf being like, hey guys, I passed. How about it? Oh, look at me. Look at me passing and being first class mage. We see Ubel following land and Sharf's like, I failed. And he's like, well, there's always next time. And then he's like, stop following me. <laughs> and she doesn't respond. We're going to talk about her and land and the end credits here in a little bit, right? But Lavin and Kenne decide that in three years, they're going to be fine. And then I love that Dinkin gets to see Freerun. Buddy, the toy is without my reach. I can't get to it. He gets to see Freerun helping and giving Fern the head pats. Aw. I like Dinkin giving credit where credit's due. And he acknowledges Freerun being like, hey, I wouldn't have made it this far if it hadn't been for you all. So I thought that was cute. And he's like, I can finally visit a certain grave in my hometown. No, buddy, go lay down. He wants me to get this toy, and it's, like, way back here, and I can't reach it. Yeah. And then Free Run's like, no problem. She's like, that's what we were, like, it all worked out in the end for us here, you know. Hmm. So, yeah, then we're back to, get this stupid toy. Huckleberry is persistent. He is the worst. <laughs> so we go back to this bakery, and I love that, I love that Fern, the most powerful mage in existence, of all of the test takers, the one that could kill Freerun's clone, the one that gives, they can predict, they can see the fluctuations in Ceres' mana, arguably the strongest one here. I love that poor Stark, our fearless warrior, has to get her to choose which which pastry she wants for breakfast. And that's what we have to worry about. <laughs> Stark, you got your hands full, dude. You, you've got your hands full. Everybody's going to be thinking Fern's the strongest mage, and you're like, no, it's convincing her whether to choose pretzels or chocolate chip cookies. Now, for me, the choice would be quite simple because I can't have cocoa because I have an allergy to it, so it would be pretzels all the way. Or, although, there's like a bunch of other pastries there I'd be choosing, just FYI, but 
I love it. And she's like, and then her and Laufen like go for the same one at the same time. I feel like there is a little bit of camaraderie between Stark and Dinkin that's kind of unspoken. I feel like it's just naturally there. I love it. And I love Dinkin's like, let's just have breakfast together outside in the shade. That's one thing I kind of love about Freerun as far as the series goes, is that it takes its time to like have these really cute little character moments and they don't necessarily add anything to the story. You don't need them, but they just give like you a moment to breathe and a moment to, I think in a lot of series, the one thing that people want are more character moments. They're like, oh, I wish we could just see our characters doing just fun things, just eating out together and having fun. And this show actually gives you that, which is, you know, I, I'm spoiled for choice, right? I feel like that was such a cute moment. And Stark realizing that Dinkin is a noble and he's like, oh my gosh, should we just like bow to him? What are we doing? I feel like Dinkin thinks Stark is cute and he's also like, dude, you are potentially dating the, one of the most powerful mages in all of the land and you don't even realize it. <laughs> it's just so cute. I love Stark has such good manners, right? It's very sweet. I also love Fern's face whenever he's just like, oh, should I like talk to you? You know, you have some more etiquette, sir? And Fern's like, dude. <laughs> it's super cute. And Dinkin's like, no, I'm just a mage like anybody else. He's like, you don't have to feel obliged. And he's like, look, I've got money. What else am I going to use it for? And then Fern's like, well, don't you have any grandchildren? And I, at that point, it's like, oh, I think because... Anytime you see someone elderly, you think that, oh, they must have children and grandchildren, but Dinkin doesn't. It's I feel like that's another thing that puts him and Freerun kind of in the same category. It's the idea that Freerun, she never settled down. She never had kids. She just kept going on learning spells and getting stronger as a mage. And Dinkin did the same after his wife passed. I feel like that whole scene where we get to find a little bit more out about Dinkin's backstory makes him and Freerun so much similar because you have, you know, Dinkin losing his wife, Freerun losing Himmel, and both of them wanting to go see them again. It's like, okay, there's that similarity there. But it also makes me wonder if the reason why Laufen's with him is because he doesn't have any kids, so Laufen's kind of like, you know, a foster kid of his own, right? He's like, my, my wife passed away when I was in my mid-20s, and he never married or tried to marry again. Instead, it was all to pursue becoming a mage I definitely got when he was talking about the wife being sickly and she died when he was in his mid 20s she was the daughter of a frontier noble of the northern plateau who was defeated in a political dispute back then I was in need of wealth and influence and you kind of see her hand like slightly get smaller and smaller there and then he's like, those who were, those were the only ways I knew how to save her by having more influence. I love that her hand slowly shrinks like she's getting weaker and weaker. It definitely gave me a, if you've ever watched Bleach before, there's a character named Byakuya. They definitely, we find a little bit out about his backstory and there's a similarity to this moment and it reminded me of it quite a bit. And I was like, oh, this seems like Byakuya. So, and Hisana. So I definitely had that like relation, that vibe there. Eventually my dog's gonna quit, like right when I'm done with the discussion, he's gonna be done. But yeah, he's like, the only ways I knew to save her were wealth and influence. But right about that time, Sari established the Continental Magic Association and it began offering privileges, but it was just after my wife had already passed. So it feels like kind of like a, a too little too late. She started the association where she could give out the spells, but his wife had died at that point. So he's like, well, now I need to become this Imperial mage and then become this first class mage so I can get possibly, maybe he started out wanting a certain spell and then it just kind of evolved into something beyond that. And now because of the border and everything, he needs that, you know, title in order to go back and see her again and he talks about feeling powerless in that moment because he couldn't save her and now he wasn't at the top of his game ah oh, i'd never felt more powerless and he's like these days i could order entire nations around but it's only after all this time and all this work that he's done mm. magic was only ever a tool to resolve political disputes but Freerun reminded me how much fun magic can be. The whole reason I became a mage was because I admired her deeds in the party of heroes. 
So he knew about Himmel and all of them too and everything. Uh, I feel like Dinkin and Himmel would have gotten along great. I feel like they could have they could have bonded so much. I wish we could have seen that. And Fern's like, well, you need to tell her. Don't send me to go tell her. She's like, go tell her yourself. And he's like, fine, that's what I'll do. So then Free Run's walking around. Free Run's got her smut novel. She's got a whole stack. She's like Belle from Beauty and the Beast. She's like got a whole, whole case. She's ready to read up before she leaves. She's like, AO3's been down since I started this mage exam, and now I got to catch back up. I'm like, girl was ready. What I think is interesting is that she sees the old lady fall with the books, and she's watching her pick them back up, and she's just standing there. And, of course, the question is, was she ever going to help the woman was she going to let her do it herself? Or did she know that Verbal was there? She looks down at the books like she's contemplating it. But then Verbal goes over and just takes action. Yeah. And just does it automatically. And she's like, okay, cool. You did it for me. So I think she, I honestly think she would have come over and helped. But Free Ren is an awkward elf. And she thought about it. And she's like, do I put these down and do it? Or what do I do? And then he kind of, and Verbal, who is very direct, he's just like to the point, he comes up to her and he's like, hey, why didn't you help that woman? And Free Run's like, well, you did end up doing it. She's like, I thought about it a little, but you ended up helping. Mm. And he's like, well, I thought one of Himmel's party members would be, and she's like, would be what? I love the idea that Verbal grew up with the stories of Himmel the hero of all of the battles that they've faced, of all the mythical things that they've solved. And, you know, it's kind of like that meet your heroes moment. But I feel like I wish Free Run would have been like, oh, Himmel would have helped her, but I'm not Himmel. You know, she's like, you're thinking of someone else. Just because we were in the same party together does not make us the same person. Just like you're not like Aaron Scharf and they're not like you, you know. But I thought this moment was really, really good, especially for Verbal's character. She's like, you tried to kill Fern's party during the first test, didn't you? She was really upset about that. <laughs> I love that. She complained to me about it. She said, you seem like someone who'd kick a dog out of the way. And I like that Verbal's like, yeah, I get that a lot because I come across as direct and straightforward and I make tough decisions. But I also like that he says, you know, I have to do certain things and I have to be in this mindset because of the task ahead of me. I do think it's interesting. He's like, there was one of them whose death would have made the world a better place. Ubel is like a monster and Verbal's like, she's probably as a first class mage going to cause some damage. So maybe we should have got her out of the way. But honestly though, I think Ubel's thing is if you just leave Ubel alone, you won't have a problem. If you get in Ubel's way, then you're a problem. So I don't know. I What I think is interesting about Verbal's character that really surprised me is from the surface, he seems like somebody who is, like Fern said, feels like somebody who would kick a dog out of the way, who's just really rough and, um, and just not cocky necessarily, but doesn't, like, isn't sympathetic. He seems like somebody that would just take direct action, be realistic about it. He seems like even more of a realist than Richter, right? Richter's pragmatic, but Richter kind of, I wouldn't say Richter's cowardly, but if he has the option to not do anything, he probably won't. Whereas from the outside, when you see Verbal, you're like, oh, he's going to kill somebody the first chance he gets. But that's not the case. Verbal's just like, he's like, I'm used to having to do and make decisions that aren't good. And so he's like, I'm going to try to not make that decision. But if you force me into a corner, yeah, I'm going to make the decision and I'm going to do it. So I like that we get more of his character throughout this moment. And him telling Freeman, he's like, I would do anything to protect my hometown. Like, he has a very close tie to protecting people. And he's like, I wanted to become a first-class mage for the privilege of learning any spell I desired. With a more powerful spell, I can slaughter more demons. So his objective is clear, right? We don't know what type of spell Dinkin is going to ask for, right? I am curious what kind of spell, like as far as Dinkin and Methode goes, I don't know what kind of spell they would ask for. I don't know exactly. Uh, Dinkin, Methode, I have no clue. It's like, what, what spell does Methode need? She seems like a pretty all-rounder. Um, Dinkin, I wonder if it would be a spell to detect weaknesses within, within the opponent because Dinkin's pretty smart. He can strategize and he can, as long as he can find an opening 
he would be pretty unstoppable. So if he if he had a spell that let him find that would let him find an opening, then that would be pretty handy to have. So I don't know. Then you have verbal, who is his spell is directly to kill more demons. So he wants a spell that's definitely offensive, right? And we'll see where that goes with that. Ferns is with the laundry. We're gonna talk about it. And then we have land. What spell did he learn? What spell did Ubel learn? I have a theory about Ubel's, but we'll see. And I have a theory about lands. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I have a theory about them, but we're going to get to them in a minute. But he just basically wants to slaughter more demons and protect his hometown. And Fern's like, neat. <laughs> but he's like, even in other parts of the world, I can do everything I can to help people in need. I love the idea that Verbal took this from Himmel. The idea that he heard stories about Himmel the hero when he was a kid and there's a statue of him posing of course just him all by himself posing and then he had all these stories in the storybook so he had like the the quest of the thousand what was it the thousand mirror tower which i would love to see some of these and then the the battles against boast the immortal the seven sages of destruction the hell emperor dragon i'm like i wonder if the hell emperor dragon was the one that they faced when hater was um hungover and he read them alongside his uh friend Mikasa <laughs> I mean his childhood friend and he's like I love those stories as a kid but when he talked with the elders yeah they talk about Himmel defeating the monsters but then they just talk about the random things Himmel did for the village and I love the lesson here of you have all these grand and extravagant things that as a kid you love reading about like the legends and the mythos and all of that but then as you get older, you appreciate the work that people do just in your own community and locally where you're at, just as much as the big fairy tales, right? So for the people living in the village, Himmel helping them out was much more of a benefit than all of the legendary stuff that happened elsewhere. Like for them, it's what's happening now, right? And I love that Verbal kind of realized you know, even though he can do these great things and kill all these demons, he still needs to help these villages because every little bit keeps that village moving forward. It keeps that progress of the community. And he's like, if Himmel hadn't come there, he's like, it probably, the village would have been just destroyed and that would have been it. I like that we get like the little um, quick glimpse of the demons with the horns there. We get one, he looks like, um, he looks like an evil Angemon. <laughs> I don't know what this is, if he's the demon king or what, but he looks like an evil Angemon. I don't know what else to think about him, but maybe he's just the demon that invaded the village. And then Verbal sees everybody picking things back up, and we see a little storybook. He's like, if Himmel the hero hadn't come to my village, then I doubt it would still be there whether he saved the world or not. He's like, those stories of Himmel's less exciting adventures are what guided me here. And she's like, okay. And then he tells her, I love that he kind of like, it's not that he necessarily mansplains, but he kind of does when he's like, you know, don't take advantage, don't take advantage of these encounters, treasure all of them that you have. And she's sitting here with a book like, I know. <laughs> I like that Verbal tries to be nice and tell her that. And she's just like, yes, I got that. Bye. <laughs> Bless her. But I'm glad we got that little encounter. So... So it seems like, if we're talking about Verbal, he is going back with Sharf and Air, and they're going up north back home. Okay. Cool. So we know where they're going. They're going north back home. So there is a chance we will see them in the future. There's a chance we'll see them in the future, and Freerun might have a, a conversation with him again. We'll see how that goes. And then we cut to this flashback where they're trying, she has, she's moving the box with her staff. Himmel's holding it. Eisen has like a barrel and a box. Hater has just a bag of rice. And they're like, can't we move across one by one? She's like, well, yeah, but then I'd be stuck here by myself. And Eisen's like, should we get a move on and like go defeat the demon king? And, and Himmel's like, shh. Himmel's like, we've got to get 100% on all the levels. <laughs> He's like, I've got to help everybody out. So shh, just don't, don't, don't question it, Eisen. Don't question it. He's like, it's not insignificant. He's like, I can't just not help someone that's in front of me needing help. And I love the Hyder's like, yeah. And Freerun's like, okay. I just love all of this inspiration that we have from Himmel in this moment. He's just so perfect. 
And then her being like, the world has changed. Like people are, and that idea that Verbal showed her that all the influence he had in those moments, helping others have influenced them to pay it forward and have let this era of humans come about and has changed the world. It's so sweet. I love it so much. It's great. So then they get their privileges and they can bring guests and, and free run doesn't even want to go. She's like, Oh, I don't want to go. And then when they get there, I love that this girl here is like, uh, yeah, free ring can never go back in. Um, actually, now that I mention it, Sari said that for the next thousand years, she's barred from entering the Continental Magic Association facility for a thousand years. She can't retake the test. They're like, nope, she's not invited back. I like the Fern's, Fern is like, excuse me. And Freeman's like, no, it's fine. I just, I made her mad. She won't let me come back. It's fine. I don't need to come back. It's okay. We've got you with me. What did you do to deserve this? And Freeman's like, yeah, I rubbed her the wrong way. She's like a child. So she's like, I didn't want to be here anyway. So then Stark's like, you know what? I, I'm glad Stark decided to stay with her. He's like, I don't. I'm not going to leave her by herself. I, I don't want to be in there with all those mages anyway. Stark's like, he's like, I'm terrified of Fern. <laughs> I don't need to be around all those other mages as well. Right? Also, probably a good thing. If Ubel saw Stark and realized he was with Fern, Stark's life may have been in jeopardy. So we are very lucky that Stark avoided that encounter. That fateful encounter could have been bad. So they're just hanging out, getting their privileges, and then... You know, she's so proud of Fern and how much she's grown. And she's like, in this era, Fern will probably become a more famous mage than me. And I was like, that's not saying much, Freerun, because you kind of hid from everybody. <laughs> you didn't even want to be noticed or acknowledged. So, but probably, I would say Fern is going to be more famous than Freerun by the end. And Freerun's happy with that. And Stark is too. So then Lernin comes up. And Lernin, he thinks that... And I feel kind of bad for Lernan in this moment because he, for a hot second, and I know I'm wrong, for a hot second when we saw his eyes looking back at Fern or back at Freerin, his eyes kind of looked a little bit like Himmel's. So I was going to be like, is, is Lernan related to Himmel? Are we going to get into that? Is that, the, is that what's happening here? No. Instead, Lernan, because Sari was rude to him last episode, he thinks that Sari isn't going to remember him and he has to prove his worth. To Sari, and he thinks that the way to do that is to kill Freerun right out front of the the hall gates. And Stark's like, "What the hell are we doing?" And Freerun's like, "No, it's fine." She's like, "I'm used to these death threats; they happen all the time. It's fine." She can he can see my mana fluctuating, so that is a problem. But he's just like, "I'm this battle hardened mage, and all I know is battle. And these peaceful times aren't working for me." So he's like, if I can kill you and get in Sari's good graces, then she won't be disappointed in me. And Freerun's like, yeah, I'm not fighting you. That's going to be a waste of time. She's like, mages who only know how to fight can be so awkward. And she's kind of talking a little bit like herself because she is Freerun the Slayer, right? So Freerun's like, yeah, I kind of only want to kill demons. So I know how awkward that can be. But I've trained myself over the years to use magic for other things than just killing demons. And it's helped me get through life. Maybe it can help you. <laughs> Have you ever read a grimoire lately? Um, but yeah, her poor shoulder. And I'm glad that she didn't tell Fern exactly what happened. Because I think Fern would have, like, went to go kick, you know, Lernan's ass. But she's like, there's no need for you to go down in history. She's like, Sari already will remember you. And I love the idea that we go back to the atrium and she's like, you made these flowers with magic and it was magic from Flom Spell. And it's just like such, it almost feels like a hypocrisy in a moment. She's like, Freerun's like, you are a kid. She's like, you're such a child. She's like, you get on to me for liking Freerun's magic and calling me useless, but yet, but yet, this whole place is made up with magic that's dedicated towards your former students that you can't forget. But you call Flom a failure, but you're sitting here, your, your choice of test hall is an atrium where it's filled with the magic of your failed student. Okay. <laughs> sure, Jan. <laughs> like that's, that's the vibe that I get is free from being like, sure, Jan. Yeah. Okay. 
And then she's like, didn't you call it useless? And Sari says that Flom was a failure because she didn't reach the same heights that Sari did. And so she talks about all of her students after her. Most of them died without reaching my level. And then we see like little glimpses of them. She's like, but it's strange. And we see like a girl there with, with a girl there that has a staff and it kind of looks like, like Kine a little bit with the water, which is interesting. And then we see a guy there and he has like the spell with, to like capture the bu to bur the bird, capture the bird with the, the same uh, thing that Jeannot and them used. And then the golem with the golem there with learning. And we see his staff there, uh-huh, coming to life. For some reason, I never regretted taking on any of my students. Hmm. And she's like, why is that? And Freerun's like, well, once you're a teacher to a kid, even if they don't become the same as you, that doesn't mean that you're not going to care about them. And Sari is just awkward like Freerun is. She truly is a child. She's like, you're fine learning. She's going to remember you. And then they go back. And that's it. So then she's like, truly, we are awkward, both you and I. Mm -hmm. So then there's all the kids running around seeing Stark. Craft's there, too. So Craft is following after them. I'm so excited. I hope we see Craft in season two. I love him. I want to know more about his mystery self. So... I hope we do. But, like, everybody in the village knows Stark. It's so cute that he spent all this time getting to know everyone. He kind of is like Himmel, where he meets people he doesn't know. He never goes anywhere where he doesn't make a friend. Stark's just that sweet. He's that sweet and innocent, and I love him so much. So then we have uh, the spell that Fern asked for. And she's like, ta-da. And in true Freerun fashion, she asked for a spell to make clothes clean and spotless. It'll make laundry a breeze. And Freerun's like, well, that is a legendary level spell from mythology. And yeah, she's so proud of Fern. And then Fern's like, yeah, Sari was not impressed. And Sari's just like, you're insane. <laughs> you're insane. She's like, of course you're Freerun's student, but I already said you could pass, so I can't no take backsies. Honestly, I love it. I could see some people being mad, being like, I wanted Fern to learn some, like, badass... Ma I'm like, no, that's Verbal. Verbal's learning the badass spell that's gonna, like, kill a demon in an instant. That's Verbal's business. He's learning the badass spell. I think Dinkin's gonna find a spell to look at an opening. Methode, I don't know. Maybe a spell to ward off people flirting with her. I guess. <laughs> but Fern learning the laundry spell, that's so perfect. And it's just, like, the thing about it is... Fern doesn't need a spell. She could kill Freerun's clone. She doesn't need any other spells. She knows what to do. Girl's going to be fine. But keeping those clothes spotless, that's going to take a lot of time away from that that she could be devoting to other things. So I love it. I, I freaking love it. So then we see where they're all going. The three of them are headed off north into the unknown. And then we see Kenny and Lavine. And they're like, we're going to try to pass three years from now. And Freerun's like, that's good. It's been fun. Take care. See you later. And they're like, well, we spent a lot of time with them. Aren't we going to say more of a goodbye? And I love this. I love that it's like, it's not goodbye. Just see you later. She's like, it would be embarrassing when we meet again if we were having these terrible goodbyes because we're going to see each other again. I love the idea that we're not saying goodbye like it's the last time. We're going to see you again. Just you wait. I love that so much. So then we see as we're walking through and we meet, say goodbye to that, fan, that man that Himmel says the same thing. He's like, I know we're going to see them again on our travels. So why would we tearful goodbyes just aren't our style? And I love it. So then as he goes away and then, and, but that moment there, I nearly cried because when he says it would be embarrassing when we meet again, I nearly cried because that goes back to episode one where it's like he didn't see her for 50 years because he knew he was going to see her again. And then when he sees her again one more time, he doesn't even say goodbye then. And then she cried because she didn't get to say goodbye to him, but she's going to see him again at end. So it's like it would be embarrassing when we meet again 
if we did that. Shut up. Show just shut up. Stop it. I was... I was like, oh my God, how dare you? <laughs> so then we see what everybody else is doing, right? We see everybody else in this moment as we go through the ED and it starts to, to play for us. We see the little patch where they met and we see the, the cemetery where he's buried at and where Hater's buried at, right? We see Ison sitting there waiting. Oh my God. We see the tree where Flom was at and the stuff inside with Flom. We see Lavine and Kine. They're there. And then next we see, so we see Lernin with Air. So Lernin is, Lernin is Air's grandfather, who was the first class mage. That makes sense. So Lernin is her grandfather. Okay. That problem solved. So we see them. They're all traveling together. Nice. Then we see uh, Dinkin hanging out with Laufen and Richter. Dinkin's not in any hurry to leave. I wouldn't be surprised if Dinkin stayed in the city for a while, depending on what his, his privilege was. But he's going to go north as well. I would be surprised. I think Laufen will stay and hang out with Richter maybe. Possibly. Or she might go with Dinkin. I'm excited to see what happens with them second season. What we get with them. Then we see, um, we see Methode hanging out with the girl with the book. And Bathman, she's traveling with them, which I think is interesting. So they ended up traveling together. I think it's interesting that all of the mages, the first class ones, are with some of the ones that didn't pass. So I'm curious to see what Method is going to do with them. We didn't get to see what happened with Edel, Dunst, and One Punch Man. So I feel like they're out of the story. I feel like they're not going to be in the story anymore. I feel like of all the characters, the three of them are out I feel like Lavine and Kinney are out for right now because they're going to be training for the next three years. I feel like there's a chance we'll see Dinkin again. There's a chance we'll see Method again. There's a chance we'll see Verbal again with their group. I feel like there's a chance season two. I don't think we'll see Lavine or Kinney. I don't think we might see Richter again um, for a while either because he's going to stay there with... I, I wouldn't surprise me if we flashed back to the middle of the city just for laughs to see Levine, Kine, and Richter hanging out together, training. But I think Laufen's going to go with Dinkin up north. And then uh, Fern is obviously traveling with Freerun and them. Then we have... Um, the next scene is Ubel walking alone. Now, we know that the original... Uh, land is back in his village. I think Ubel is walking that way. I think she is going that way to find him. She's like, I'll find you. Like a stage five clinger. I wonder if her... Because here's the thing. Do I think that Ubel asked for the cloning spell or the cloning technique that Land has? No. Because I think Land's is an ability that's innate within him. And she wants it because it's so good. So I don't think that she asked for that spell. I wouldn't be surprised if she asked for a spell to track someone and it was a tracker spell and she has a tracker spell on land to go find where his original copy is and land's like shit. <laughs> so I, I wonder if land got like a teleportation spell. That would be amazing if land could copy himself, but he also has teleportation to get away from her and they just chase each other till the ends of the earth. I would be totally fine with that. I would be so fine with that. I'd be all about it. I will see. I want to see Land. And I want to see our, our team lube next ep next season. I want to see them next season so badly. I I think it would be great. And then we see Craft. Yes. Craft seeing all the kids playing. I Craft, you're following behind them. I want to see. Then we see Cyan. Cyan is like looking at a woman with an umbrella. I'm like, dude. Are you, are you trying to get this young damsel's attention? What are we doing? I, he's on the beach somewhere. What is he doing? Has he found his friend? I want to know. I miss him. So I'm so glad we got to see him for a hot second. I want to know if he's, if he's, his pursuits have paid off. And then we have the grave of Flom. Mm-hmm. Right? Is that right? Is that Flom or Himmel's grave? Anyway. And then she's like, it would be embarrassing when we meet again. So there we go. So there we go. Ah. Ah. Yes. So yeah, I'm um, super excited for season two. 
Um, I might be doing a live stream sometime in August, I think in August or September, um, where I'll talk about the series that I've caught up with, but that aren't ending. So like Free Ren, like Uramichi Onisan when that happens, with like Trigun, Skip and Loafer, Blue Lock, like all the series that this year I've caught up with, but are not finished. They're just kind of on hiatus until season two comes out. Um, I'll probably do a live stream sometime in late August or September about them. So um, I'll keep y'all notified on Patreon and YouTube about that. But y'all, <laughs> I I honestly, when I started Free Ren, I did not know the appeal. And I've never really watched like high fantasy or stuff with all the mages and class systems and all that. So this was kind of my first foray into it. And I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. There's so much you can do with the lore and the magic and the character work. And this series is one that I have looked forward to each and every week. And I've had to watch ahead because I just couldn't wait. I wanted to see what the next episode was like. So, so I'm really excited to get into future episodes and see what all we do with them. So that's really exciting to me. But yeah, y'all, <laughs> I can't wait to see what we get um, next, hopefully it's like, I don't know if it'll be next year when we get season two. It might be 2026. Whenever we get season two, I want them to take their time. I want them to do well with it. Um, I probably will not be reading the manga in between because I, I enjoyed watching this so much that I definitely want to wait and see the anime when it comes out. And there's so many anime to watch in between now and then that I'm not going to get bored. So don't worry. I will, it'll just make my hype and just make my excitement for season two that much stronger. So I'm so excited to see what's going to happen, but please no manga spoilers. Please no spoilers for what could be in season two, but I'm really excited uh, to hear your comments down below. Otherwise about this episode, what y'all's theories are about certain things. Um, just give me your theories without any knowledge of season two material. So with that being said, thank you all so much for following me on my free run journey. I'm excited to get to some other anime, but this one has been one of my favorites this year, and I'm not going to be forgetting it anytime soon. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the reactions and discussions. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back very soon with more reactions.